BARD is a form of AI that we call augmented imagination. It takes the ideas that you have in your head and helps you explore different ways to, to bring them to life. So Jack, you head up BARD at Google, right? Which is Google's chatbot. What I'm curious about is what this stuff is actually useful for. When we started BARD as an experiment in March of this year, we had a hypothesis coming in, which was it is a collaborator with AI, meaning it's not a search engine, it's a possibility generator. And we took lengths to talk about, here are some ways that we believe that you can use this as a possibility generator, brainstorming an idea, help you develop something. And what's interesting where we were in March to where we are now, there's this tendency that new product experiences tend to have, which is you anchor them to the most familiar thing that was recently available to you. So of course people came in and started to type in things that felt familiar to a search engine. We're working on this notion of combining Bard's capability of doing things with you with Google Assistant's ability to do things for you and assistant with Bard. But at, over time, what we found is the amount of context that people give to Bard isn't like a search engine. It's like somebody that they're working with. And this notion that it helps people find a possibility that they might not have explored leans into this thing that we've been talking about for a while, which is Bard is a form of AI that we call augmented imagination. It takes the ideas that you have in your head and helps you explore different ways to, to bring them to life. Why is it so hard to bring these large language models to heal? Like, what is the technical challenge here? Is there an easy way to explain that? Well, I, I wanna be clear about the, the shape of the problem. If you ask a question like, is the sky blue? We probably have a visceral response to that, which is if somebody asks me, is the sky blue? I'll say yes. Is that technically accurate? No. It's not. Let's say you're you're writing a short story that you want to talk about, you know, do aliens exist and you want to create something about that. In many cases, like, you can get a very short, precise answer. We don't have any information that suggests that it does. But what we find from people using BART is they want to explore what would happen if maybe aliens existed so that I can sort of take my creative flows uh, to, to the next level. And BARD kind of helps them think through those kinds of things. And so it's really less about just getting them to not make things up. It's about giving people the control of, hey, when do you want this thing to be making things up? And so we start to introduce things like, maybe you don't want to eliminate making things up. You want to give people control of when it's making things up versus when you need to make sure that you're double checking uh, something. And so in September, we launched the capability to double check a response that you get from BART. BART has this new set of features called extensions that lets the AI work across different Google products. So for example, you can say, I'm planning a solo trip to Austin this spring. Can you find me flights and recommend things to do? And BART will go give you a long list of useful recommendations that you could even narrow by saying something like, I want you to focus on barbecue spots and hiking trails. You can have it do research for you on YouTube and it'll recommend videos and spit out quick summaries, or it'll even go dig through your Gmail inbox to find that message you're looking for or figure out when your shoes are finally gonna arrive. Google has a pretty unique idea to fix the AI hallucination problem. Bard has a new feature called Double Check, where after it gives you a response, you can click a little button and it'll go search the web to see if it just made anything up. If it finds other people saying the same things that Bard just told you, it'll give you a link to websites that have the same information. And if it can't find anything to back up its answer, it'll highlight it in red to tell you that you might want to go double check. It's a preview of a future where all of the various things that you want to do on your computer get easier, more interoperable, and a little bit less annoying. What should people be looking forward to next year? I think it's answering the question that you started our conversation with, which is, okay, I'm not a software developer. I'm not a digital creator. I'm not a student. I'm just, you know, a person living in Western Pennsylvania trying to, you know, trying to find something to, to be helpful in my uh, in my day to day life, you're going to start to find answers for those things. We think some of them are already there. But I also acknowledge that like three quarters of the world has still not used generative AI. And it's not from not having heard of it. It is about that. How can it be helpful for me? And what I hope for people around the world is they start to feel 
the power of what it's like to have a trusted confidant that you can bounce your ideas off of and it's not going to judge you. And when people start to experience that and give us the feedback, we're going to continue to, to accelerate the progress that we can make in that alignment. How do you make this profound technology helpful in a responsible way?